Car manufacturers, Mazda, other brands, even Toyota have said this, they are not, they say, focusing on electric for electric cars, not offering good electric cars because they say that, well, there's not enough charging points. People don't want to buy electric cars, especially in the West, apparently, because there's not enough charging points. It, it's This is the fault, they say, of the government. However, in the United States, that's changing pretty quickly. In fact, very quickly. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. The United States added 4,200 brand new DC fast charging ports in three months. That means they're on track this year actually to install probably around about 17,000 new DC fast chargers. 17,000. That's a lot. And that's going to make a big difference. A new industry report from EV charging data firm Paren shows that 2025 is going to be a record-breaking year for DC fast charger deployment. The State of the U.S. Industry Report US EV fast charging Q2 2025 says there will be a 20% year-over-year jump in DC charging installations. 16,700 new fast charging ports will be installed on top of a record 2024. In Q2, there was 4,242 DC fast charging ports that actually were turned on, not just talked about or installed. All of them were turned on, meaning there is actually 60,000, well, not quite, 59,700 DC fast chargers in the United States. To give you some context, there is about 60,000 gas stations in America. So apparently there's like 300 more gas stations than there are DC fast charging ports. Yeah, there's still more gas stations and these gas stations have multiple pumps. However, the number of gas stations in the US has been declining every year for the last five years. In fact, in 2019, there was 63,000 gas stations. There's now 60,000. So 3,000 have disappeared. I'm going to guess that over the next 10 years, probably another five to 10,000 will disappear, then probably another 20,000 over the following five years. They're going to disappear really, really fast. And if you think about it, if there is 60,000 DC fast chargers in the US, range anxiety is probably going to not be a real significant issue for most people. I mean, if you've got an electric car that might have, you know, say 200 miles of range, uh, that might be more of an issue for you. But if you have an EV with, say, 350 miles of range, even 300 miles, I think even doing long road trips, you're not really going to be concerned about finding a fast charger when there's 60,000 of them. But if there's an additional, right, if there's an additional approximately 9,000 that'll be installed over the remaining six months of this year, we're actually going to see more DC fast chargers in the United States than gas stations. So by the end of this year, there should be around about 68 to 69,000 DC fast chargers. That's massive, right? Now, even though Trump has removed fast charger funding, and even the courts apparently have forced him to give some of that funding back, many of these projects were already happening. So momentum will continue through 2025. 2026 could be a bad year because of the funding um, declines, because of what Trump's done. It's really sad to see it, unfortunately. But um, yeah, 2025, though, it's still going to be a record year. Now, here's the other thing. A lot of these DC fast charging stations, old, not all of them, but a lot of them are. DC, the actual charging speeds, Lots of them are good, but lots of them are not so good. New chargers, though, are almost always capable of really fast charging speeds. You know, you're looking at 200 kilowatt minimum. Paren's data shows that the industry is consolidating around bigger fast charging hubs with 8, 10, 12 or more ports at each location. And high powered hardware supports faster charging and higher throughput. Plus, here's another big issue in the US, reliability and not just in the United States, but in many places, apparently reliability is improving significantly. Uh, the US Reliability Index posted a 5.3% year-over-year gain as aging charges get replaced and better quality new charging stations come online. 
National average utilization dipped slightly in Q2 to 16.1%, down from 16.6%, says Electric, while part of that drop is due to warmer weather. Now, apparently, um, the truth is there's just a lot of DC chargers being installed. So generally, when you rock up to a, a charging station, it's going to be it's going to be free. So it's going to be available. That's the most likely scenario. Pricing. Apparently, charging prices have declined. The national average is, I think, quite expensive, 50 cents per kilowatt hour for DC fast charging on average in the US, but the price fell to 48 cents on average per kilowatt hour. Apparently, the reason is because more stations are switching from flat rate pricing to time of use models. 366 stations made that switch last quarter alone. One third of those were in California. So if you use a fast charger in California in the middle of the day, I reckon it should be very cheap. The California government, if they were smart, they would be saying to people, basically saying to these, making deals with these operators to say, you know, if you want to use our, our chargers from 10 a.m. in the day to say 4 p.m., I'd be saying, hey, it's almost free, maybe 10 cents per kilowatt hour. It would make sense, right? Because California is still curtailing a lot of solar. Now, they have a lot of batteries, that's helping, but there's still a lot of extra solar that they're not using during the middle of the day. Use it at these charges. It would be perfect. That's what I think they should do. Do you guys agree? Let me know what you think. Anyhow, pricing, nearly a third of stations, um, the pricing was up or down. So anyway, on average, the pricing has come down. Apparently, this was the big takeaway from this industry report. Uh, charging 2.0 is here. And charging 2.0 is an indicator of the main parameters are improved scale, speed, faster charging, and better customer experience. That's the new, what's happening now with these new developments for these new charges. So Tesla does have some serious legitimate competition, which is good. I mean, we, that's what we want. We don't want Tesla to own the market. They still have the best experience, I think. A lot of people criticize Tesla's charging speed. Oh, it's so slow, so slow. But the truth is the, the experience is actually really good in my in, from what I had anyway when I was in America. Charge point operators who deliver a strong customer experience, prioritizing speed, reliability, seamless payment and pricing transparency, premium amen amenities and safe well-lit locations will earn long-term loyalty from EV drivers said the network strategy and consumer offering at Mercedes-Benz HPC North America. So clearly this is huge. This is a big a big difference in the US seeing all these new fast chargers being installed. I think new customers, people who buy an EV now, I think it's never been a better time in the United States to buy an electric car. EVs are not going up in price. Inflation has been pushing everything up, but EVs have, if anything, gone down in price. The tax credit is still available not for long, but it is still available. And there's never been more models than there is today. Let me know what you think in the comments. Bye-bye.